Hi everyone and welcome to the Scrap and Create YouTube channel. It's Christine here and I am here with my walkthrough of my 8.5 by 10.5 mini album that I created using the Codex Leonardo paper collection from Chow Bella. Now I used two packs of the 12 by 12 paper for this album as well as one pack of the A4 paper. The 12 by 12 does have some cut aparts to it but it um, is mostly designer paper. The A4 is lots of very unique cut aparts, little booklets that you can make, um, things you can punch out with circles, lots and lots of tags. Um, so I definitely recommend the A4. And if you don't use all of that ephemera, the backs of all of the pages on the A4 sized paper pack um, have design, coordinating designer series papers, uh, colors, things like that, that coordinate with the main paper collection. So either way, you have beautiful paper or ephemera. Either way you go. So I only have scraps left. As you can see, I have a bunch of scraps so I can pretty up my photo mats when I'm all finished and I have a bunch of ephemera still. I didn't even use half the ephemera, I would say. There's so much. Um, so I can always go back later as I'm actually adding photos to my album and gussy up my uh, photo mats if I wish. All right, so let's go ahead and before I dig into the album, I do want to say that there is a tutorial for this album um, and it shows how to create the uh, customized pages for this album. There is also a link to another tutorial on this channel that shows how to make the 8.5 by 10.5 base album and the base pocket pages. And that is linked in the tutorial that I did for the customization of these pages. In that tutorial, I did promise a second part of the tutorial where I would show you how I decorated this album. And I hope you can forgive me. I am so sorry, but I've had so many technical problems getting these videos up and I'm so late with these videos for the good folks over at Scrap and Create that I just kind of gave up and decided to just decorate it and then go ahead and show you the walkthrough. And then after, if you like the, the, the album and would like to follow the tutorial, you can always come back to the walkthrough uh, to this video and see how I did the design paper if you wish. Okay, so enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the album. And as I said, the outside of the album measures eight and a half by 10 and a half. And it consists of four pocket pages plus the inside front and back covers for a total of 10 pages um, that you have in this album. The pages themselves measure um, eight by 10 and they are pocket pages. So there are big, uh, uh, photo mats that come out of the sides. Here is, I kept my cover very simple because I love this design by Da Vinci, the sketch painting that he did of this girl. It's, it's just so beautiful. It's iconic. You look at it, you automatically think Da Vinci. Uh, so I made this my cover. I have a key here on the bottom that I have simply glued to the cover of the album. This is a part of a set of keys from Graphic 45 that you can get a scrap and create. Here in the bottom left corner and in the top right corner I have some filigree also from Scrap and Create. These fun little um, gears which I have up here in the top left and bottom right corner were sent to me from Scrap and Create. They often place uh, fun coordinating charms and um, filigree, things like that in your packages when you order from them. They're very generous. And so these gears were just placed in one of the packages that I ordered. So I used them on the cover. This little spray down here of flowers, the uh, the, le the green leaf leaves and the off white uh, roses and rose buds are from Graphic 45, which you can get at Scrap and Create. And then the dark brown flowers that you see there are actually um, Petaloo flowers. These are available at Scrap and Create. You get a bunch in a package, so I have a bunch left for other uh, projects in the future. 
this um, keyhole here is just a Tim Holtz I had in my stash. And then some of this other little filigree that I added is just from my collection. I also added from the paper collection, I cut out Leonardo da Vinci. It was one of the little cut aparts from the collection. I backed it on black cardstock and I did adhere it with a little bit of foam tape so it has a little bit of dimension to it. Um, just to kind of, you know, finish up that that front cover. So I was really happy with how it came out. It's very, very simple. It doesn't have tons of, um, you know, 3D cutting or fussy cutting or anything like that. Um, it's kind of simple for the albums that I usually make, but I love it. So here is the spine, which measures two and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. This is just beautiful paper from the collection very da Vinci and then the back is also kept very simple and on the back there you see at the bottom it says da Vinci code Fibonacci sequence and then there's a bunch of numbers which I thought was kind of fun and then it's the rose line and maps and things like that so very cool and a very simple back cover love this gold uh, flower this is actually part of the paper collection that's not an embellishment that I added uh, but it almost looks like it pops off that page it's so pretty Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the album. I'm going to go ahead and sit down now. Now, I have stuck a bunch of very plain photo mats in here just to demonstrate what you can do with this. You have tons and tons and tons of room. So please keep in mind as we're flipping through that you can fit probably 10 photo mats in each pocket, if not more. Um, there's This album is huge and there is tons of room for your photos in it. I just put a few samplings uh, throughout the album to demonstrate um, where the little tuck spots and such are. Okay, um, so here is the inside front cover and here is what it looks like matted. So we have this beautiful paper. This paper is actually the back of one of the ephemera papers from the A4 sized paper pack. And so is this. So this is the, the front and back covers are the only places where I used the actual pattern paper on the back of the ephemera pieces in that A4 collection. Uh, all the rest of the paper that you see throughout the entire album is from the 12 by 12. And then a lot of the ephemera, of course, is from the A4 and the 12 by 12. So you have a very large pocket here and it's a very deep pocket. You can actually fit on the inside front and back covers a full size 8 by 10. Of course, it's going to cover up basically the entire back of the um, of the of the design paper but this is an 8 by 10 uh, so you can imagine this is a huge photograph and it will fit in there for to demonstrate for you guys today all I did was I just simply slipped a 5 by 7 in here and I also slipped a tag now you will see these tags throughout the album so I want to talk about them for just a second these are the graphic 45 regular sized tags you get nine in a package and one package will be all you need for this particular album if you like would like to follow along and create this album with me um, you will only need one package of these I also used the coordinating die so when you're looking at this tag here you see black and then you see um, design paper and the black is around the design paper the black is the tag itself and the design paper, and on the back here, just the plain cardstock, is what the die cuts out. So it leaves this nice border of the black tag around it, and it's just perfect. I added a fun little inkwell charm here with a feather. It's a, it's a bottle of ink with a quill pen, which is what he would have used to do his writings and such back in the day. So again, this is that coordinating die. On a couple of the backs of my tags, I also use this fun gear uh, die that comes with this, and I'll show you that when we get there. All right, so here is my tag, just some simple ribbon I picked up at the Dollar Tree, actually, and then that fun little charm there. I added this Da Vinci Code as one of the cut aparts, and I added three cute little tiny, teeny tiny tags here, and I added a little bit of twine, punched a little hole, and added a little bit of twine to the tops of them. 
uh, and just made this a little tuck spot just for some interactions and fun and you could of course journal on the back of them with like a white gel pen or even back them on cardstock if you wish this one says the natural desire of good men is knowledge i like um, how there's lots of quotes from da vinci throughout the, the ephemera and the paper collection i think that's really really awesome so moving on now to page one, this is a, uh, a kind of a more complicated page, but it's actually very easy to put together if you watch the tutorial. So I have a little closure here, um, and it's just a cut apart from the collection. It says Roslyn. I have a little metal filigree here from my stash, and then another little cut apart from the paper collection down here that says, the artist sees what others only catch a glimpse of. I love that quote. Um, so this opens, this is magnetized, so there's a magnet underneath this uh, little tag here, but I wanted this to be nice and secure, so I also added two magnets, uh, you know, four total, two here, two here, two here, two here, so eight total um, for this little mechanism here. So this opens up and then you have little pockets on the inside. I just stuck um, three by five photos um, in here. You can fit way more than just the one. And I have little tags, whoops, that I have um, cut out from the collection, punched a hole in the top and just added some brown, dark brown ribbon to coordinate. On this side, it's the same thing. I just stuck a little uh, photo mat and then, of course, a tag from the collection, which is one of Da Vinci's sketches that he did. And then, this page isn't done yet. So I have this other fun little closure that is magnetized. So there's magnets underneath of it here that attach it to this. And so we have this flap up here. It won't all be in frame at the same time because it's so large. So we have this flap up here and I've added just another tag from the collection. You can fit four by sixes up here in these pockets. So four by six, I stuck a little three by three, four by six and below you can fit up here. So I just added some to demonstrate. And then this flips down like so. Let me show you the bottom here. Let me, oops, gotta push it a little bit further. Okay, this is the bottom where I also just have some four by six, three by three, uh, little tag from the collection. But again, you can fit lots in these pockets. And then you have this large spread in the middle where you can really do any kind of combination of photos that you wish anything that you wish. Um, you can cover this part up right here if you wish. Um, this is just a quote that is a cut, a cut apart from the collection that says, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And as you can see there, I added a bunch of little cut aparts and tags behind it. I made it a little tuck spot just to have some fun with it. But again, you could easily take these out and just cover all of this. You could um, even do a huge five by seven photograph. You could do a slightly cut down um, eight by 10, um, or, you know, just keep these and put your photos around this little montage that I've created of cut aparts, whatever you wish. So this folds up like so, and then this top one folds down and that closes like that. And then of course on the outside here, you guys know if you've watched any of my walkthroughs on this channel, I really like to preserve some of the paper. So I have areas where I don't plan on putting any photos. So obviously I'm not going to cover Mr. Da Vinci here, but you could take a little three by three photo and put it right here if you wish. And same thing up here, if you would like to do that. Um, and then for my purposes, I would leave this whole front plain because it's just so absolutely beautiful. But it, again, if you wanted to, you could take some small photos and stick them, you know, wherever and not fully cover up some of the beautiful images. That is a comp design choice that is completely up to you. Um, there are four side tags because there are four pocket pages in this album and they are all the same. So I'm only going to pull out one and I just have some, um, some light kind of off-white on one side and dark brown on the other and they all have tabs that were uh, cut with a Stampin' Up! punch from the paper collection and so they just slide right in these side pockets here and again that's the only one I'll pull out because they are exactly the same 
Here we are now on page two, which is a very simple page. It's just a flap and a pocket. So here's our beautiful flap. This is one of the cut aparts from the 12 by 12 collection. And I just have some uh, plain colored cardstock on the back where you could place a photo. Here's what the page looks like matted. Of course, this is the Vitruvian man um, that he drew that is so iconic to Da Vinci. Really, really cool. Um, I just stuck a four by six photo mat in here. Again, you can fit five by sevens if you want. You can fit lots and lots and lots of photographs. These pockets are incredibly generous. Uh, as you can see, my whole hand's fitting in there. You can fit probably 10 photos at least in here. I did another little tag using the Graphic 45 tags and the coordinating dies. And I have a Vitruvian Man charm on this tag. I found this on Etsy and I thought it was just perfect for this album. On the back, I just have some plain cardstock. By the way, these tags are perfect for three by four photos. They fit perfectly. This black cardstock actually measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So it's like a mat for your photo. So you could stick a three by four, you could stick the black down if you wanted, and then stick a three by four photo right on top of it, and you'd have a little black mat around your photo. Or you could just simply stick a three by four photo there, whatever you like, but it is the perfect size for three by four photos. Of course, for me, I would leave the front alone because it's so cool and I love that paper. Um, but that's just my design choice. You can, of course, cover up whatever you like. But look at that charm. Isn't that cool? Love that charm. All right. So again, you can fit way more in these pockets than I have. Um, way, way more. This I had also stuck in this pocket here. And this came from the A4 uh, package of um, Ephemera. And it's a little booklet, which I thought was really fun. There's a couple of these throughout the album, as you'll see. So they come like this, and so you just cut them and score them. Uh, you could even add cardstock to the center and staple them or sew them if you wish. Um, but I just kept it simple, and just there's plenty of room to journal in here or add photos. And I just added a little cut apart there at the bottom uh, from the paper collection. So that goes in this pocket as well. Moving on to page three, this is a um, just a little closure here that is magnetized. It says, painting is poetry that is seen rather than felt. Poetry is painting that is felt rather than seen. So I thought that was really cool. It was a little hard to read because it's in that cursive, but you can definitely read it at home if you uh, are holding it, you know, and not on camera trying to balance a million things. It's a lot easier to read. So this opens up here on page three. We have a flap up top here, which is just a cut apart. And I have a, just a place here for a photograph. This flap opens as well. Again, for me, I would leave these two pieces of paper alone. I wouldn't be putting photos there because I have so much room throughout the album. You know, I really don't need to. I added a little tag down here and it's open so you can slide photos in or you can just cover it with photos, whatever you would like to do. I did add some cut aparts from the collection to some of my photo mats where you can just add a little label there to whatever the photo depicts if you like. Here's what the pocket page itself looks like matted. And uh, here's just a photo mat I stuck in. Another one of those little booklets from the A4 collection. And then down here I have the Mona Lisa, which is a cut apart from the paper collection, the 12 by 12. And um, I just made it a little tuck spot and I just tucked a couple of the other cut aparts into the little space there. So you have a large spread on both the left and right flaps here for photos, plus this huge generous pocket. So you can fit, this album will easily hold, I would say over a hundred photos, easily. Okay, so now we are moving on to page four. Very simple page again, just another flap and another pocket. So here's this flap, this beautiful um, drawing of his again. That flips open. You just have some cardstock there where you could place a photo. I have another tag. I added a clock charm here, which was sent to me by Scrap and Create, just one of the little freebies that they sent. And then I used the die to cut this out. This is the little gear die I was telling you about that comes with the, the uh, tag die. So I decided to just stick it on the back. 
You can still, of course, stick your photo right over top of it. Or if you want some of the gears to show, you can maybe do like a three by three photo, something like that. Uh, lots of different ways you can you can do that with your tags. So I stuck the tag in there. Here's another little booklet. And then just a couple four by six uh, photo mats that I did add some cut aparts to uh, so that uh, and this is, these are open, so you can slide your photos right underneath those. So let's stick all this back. All right. Now we are moving on to page five. Again, I would leave this alone. I think it's absolutely beautiful paper, and I don't want to cover it up. So I would just leave this completely alone. There's a, a little closure here that says the artist sees what others can only catch a glimpse of. And that is magnetized. I also put magnets here and here on either side just to keep it nice and uh, closed. Now these tags will fit perfectly in these pockets. I decided not to put tags in uh, these particular pockets because I wanted to add charms and they are too bulky for charms. Uh, but if you just do regular tags without charms, they'll fit perfectly in these pockets. Instead, for these, I just went ahead and did some more tags and photo mats. That's what it looks like matted there and on the right side as well. And then we have this large flap here. And uh, again, I would leave this alone. I think that's beautiful, beautiful work of Da Vinci's. Here's a closure down here that's magnetized so there's a magnet here that attaches it to the pocket below and this is so large I have to pull it down to flip it up so you can see there I just have a large photo mat there you can fit different size photos you could do a collage you could fit a very large photo there if you like whatever you would like to do here's what this page looks like matted and so I just stuck a few photo mats in the pocket here and again, and here's another booklet. This is a tag that I just kind of turn into a little tuck spot. There's lots of little uh, uh, cut aparts throughout the collection that have that are great for journaling or labeling. So I just kind of stuck a bunch of those in this little tuck spot, and then you know I can move them around wherever I want later if I wish. But they're all safe and snug in that tuck spot for now. All right, so this closes and this closes. Turning the page over now, we are on page six. Here is a pocket with a flap on the um, front here. And this tag does not, there we go, didn't want to come out. I have a little um, paint and easel um, charm there, as you can see. And I used, again, the Graphic 45 tags and the, the die. And I put the gears on the back again. Whoops, I'll have to fix this one it um it broke a little bit that's probably why I didn't want to come out I probably put it in the pocket yeah there's remnants that's what happened I put it in the pocket before it was completely dry so some of the remnants are in the pocket so I will definitely fix that but you guys get the idea so here's your pocket on the front of the flap and then I also took a little um, cut apart and made it a little tuck spot where there's just some quotes and some fun graphics from the paper collection. This is a ribbon closure here on the back. There's another pocket on the flap there. Just stuck a photo mat. In the center, there's a flap. Again, that Vitruvian man, which you can place a photo on the back here. And then again, that's what it looks like matted. And I just stuck a couple photo mats in to demonstrate. So that closes like that. And then this ties closed like so. Ah, of course, when I'm on camera, I can't tie a bow. There we go. It's a messy bow, but you get the idea. <laughs> Here we are on page seven. I obviously left this alone. This is the same as on the cover, but I loved it so much. Why not? Um, but again, you can take, you know, different sized photos and place them around her without completely covering her up. 
you know, maybe something like this or, you know, what have you. There, you have lots of options and you don't have to leave the paper alone like I do. Uh, I just find that I ha give myself so much room that I'm able to have these spots where I can just admire the beautiful paper. So this opens to the right like so. And then inside, these are two pockets here um, that are on the back of that right flap. And so these have regular just tags without charms on them, which is how they can fit perfectly um, behind flaps. You don't want to put charms on them if they're behind a flap, but if they're in the front, that's fine. If there's no love, what then? These are just little cut aparts that I added to the, um, the paper here. But of course, if you wished, you could leave that off or cover it up with a four by six photograph, um, you know, that kind of is a little bit behind the tags. You can do whatever you like with all of that space up there. And then we have over here, Leonardo da Vinci again and then I just put a bunch of photo mats five by sevens four by sixes and then um, just a little cut apart from the collection as you can journal on the back of if you wish so again a very generous pocket the five by seven will fit either way vertically or portrait same obviously with the four by sixes and there's tons more room um, it's actually gaping open for so much room there uh, for photographs so that is page seven. And then moving on to page number eight, we have a front flap here. This is what it looks like um, matted. This is a closure that is magnetized that kind of holds this flap down. And um, I wanted to make this a pocket because I didn't want to cover up this pretty horse that he drew and the gears and stuff like that. So they're covered up when there's photos in, but then when you take them out, you can of course enjoy the beautiful paper. Um, so I just added a bunch of photo mats, as you can see, different sizes here, and stuck them in here just randomly. Kind of no rhyme or reason, just to show how many you can fit in here. Uh, and you can fit five by seven even and below. And then there are a bunch of cut aparts from the collection that I hadn't decided exactly where I wanted them to go. So, but I, I knew I wanted them in the album because they're so cool. So this is, these are all from the ephemera, the A4 uh, paper pack. And so I just kind of stuck them kind of randomly in this narrow little pocket, or uh, you know, short little pocket that I made here. Um, and you can journal on the backs of all of these if you like. And, and you can put them different places throughout the album. I just stuck them all there for now. And then finally I have a tag with a paintbrush charm there as you can see. Just some plain cardstock on the back and I just stuck that right in front to kind of hold everything in place. Down here is a little tuck spot um, with a quote and then uh, I just added a little cut apart from the collection. And then finally we have the inside of the back cover and uh, again you can add, I have 5x7, 4x6s, you can put 8x10s um, back here. Um, lots and lots of room and here's a tag that I did. I have a little balloon here which kind of coordinates with the cut apart from the collection down here. So here's my tag, just regular cardstock on the back and my balloon charm. This balloon charm was sent to me by Scrap and Create. Again, it's one of their generous uh, freebies. And so then, oops, just a little bit of floof there. Um, finally, I have this cut apart from the collection here and I just added some tags. Um, I really liked uh, this tag here that has kind of like a little um, date and little notes that you can make which would be great for journaling and then just just more tags and I just stuck them in here and again you can re rearrange them however you wish. Um, you don't have to use as many. You can use, you know, fewer. I just loved them all so much I had a hard time deciding. So I just kind of stuffed them all in. And uh, when it comes to putting photos in, maybe I might take some out or move some around. But I thought that they looked really pretty inside the album. And the artistry was just so worth sharing, in my opinion. So as you can see, that is my 8.5 by 10.5 album. 
uh, uses the hidden hinge mechanism uh, for all the pages. I love how flat the pages are. I didn't overdo my pages this time. Sometimes I just get to embellishing too much and the pages get thick and the book kind of gapes a little bit, but that did not happen this time. Um, this is, a, this is, I'm really, really happy with how this came together. So as you can see here, this um, closes beautifully and you have tons of room. It can, you know, expand uh, when you put your photos in. So I hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough. Again, the tutorial is also going to be on this channel. If it's not uploaded yet, it is uploading. Um, so you should be able to view it very soon, if not now. And that will show you how to do every single page design. It will also have all of the measurements as well as a materials list for you in that um, in the in the description box of that tutorial video so thank you guys so much it's great to be back with you here at scrap and create i hope that you love this album make sure and head over to scrap and create and pick up the chow bella codex leonardo collection uh it's amazing as hopefully you could see here um hopefully i you know demonstrated the paper well enough so you can see how beautiful it is i mean in person it's absolutely jaw dropping. I just kind of sat when I first got it. I just kind of sat with it and looked through it with with just like my mouth open. I just, it's just so beautiful. So, I definitely recommend it. Go check it out. Head over to Scrap and Create for all of your paper crafting needs. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this album and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.